Uh, last but not least, Riku Asikainen, he will be the moderator today. He's a, a member of the board in Kiban and uh, <coughs> he's a business angel and, and growth investment activist with 10 different growth investments. He's also co founder and board member of Kiban. So, welcome everybody. I hand over this to Riku Asikainen. Pleasure, of course, to, to ask uh, our Prime Minister Yuki Katanen to, to give us a small note on the on the recent developments of, uh, of what what, uh, what our government has done on the business angel and, and uh, growth financing. So, Mr. Katanen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let me first. Thank for organization, uh, organizers for for organizing this kind of event. This is the first time, according to my understanding, when we do have a positive move around angel investing and uh, start up entrepreneurship. Something positive have has happened in Finland. I don't know what it has, what is it what it has been, but uh, something has happened which has, which has changed our mind towards more positive mood um, to entrepreneurship. And this momentum we have to use very wisely because uh, we do need new companies. We need to get real seriously taking business out of innovations. As you probably know, Finland is pretty good land or country for innovations, but we haven't done enough in order to make business out of the innovations. And now, the mood is changing, so I'm I'm very happy that this this kind of event takes place, and we have opportunities to talk about how to finance innovations. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's Europe, we are talking about austerity measures and growth, and and somebody is saying that we shouldn't do that much austerity because it will lead to the growth and the others are saying and, and instead we, we should concentrate on on growth but the um, Finnish government's policy on this issue has been to combine the two and that's why we are talking about growth austerity because um, there will not be growth if people and business people cannot trust on the future of the country that's why you have to express the political strength to make uh, decisions to bring the deficit down and take firm grip of uh, debt development. In our case, we have adjusted our budget within a year, approximately 3% of GDP, which is not much if you compare it to the Greece, but you know, it's not the Greece. So we have adjusted, meaning raised taxes, we have raised taxes and we have cut expenditures around 5 billion euros and uh, it has really functioned in a sense that the credibility or the confidence of our country has increased quite quite remarkably one of the examples of uh, better confidence towards our country has been that yesterday the 10-year government bond rate was 1.94 which is something like 35 percentage points higher than Germany's 10-year government bond yield is. And I guess that our government bond is the second cheapest in the world. So I'm very happy about this because, uh, because the stability is the precondition of entrepreneurship. No, even, even, even if, and even though we have raised some taxes and, no, and people usually don't like it, but uh, as a result of it, we have chosen the taxes which are not that harmful for 
growth oriented business. Instead, actually, we have lowered some other taxes and given some tax incentives for business angels and, and um, innovation driven economies or companies. So we have chosen to stabilize our economy, to make austerity. By doing so, we can stabilize our debt level to 45% per GDP, which is reasonable. And we can strengthen the confidence towards our country. The second thing is this growth. So growth austerity means austerity and growth orientation. What we have done, um, we just a month ago launched five new tax incentives for for growth. Uh, of which the first one is so-called business, business angel tax relief, and we are just about to prepare this legislation. The second thing is capital gain relief, which means that uh, the capital gain rising from selling the shares of high growth potential companies is relieved by using a higher presumed acquisition cost of 50%. The third one is the doubling the depreciation rate of productive investment in, in taxation. And the fourth, this is totally new element in our tax system, is R&D deductions. And I do hope that, that this would also encourage small and medium sized companies to invest more to R&D. And the final one is innovation book, box. Uh, we try to create a tax incentive for patents and, and try to encourage companies and people to keep patents in, in Finland. So this is the toolbox which we just created. They are not new ideas in the world, but they are new ideas in Finland. And we were in a situation where we needed to choose whether we lower general company income tax uh, extra 1.5 percentage point, or we use a similar amount of money for uh, small and medium-sized companies more targeted way. And we chose the latter one. We have already uh, lowered company income tax by 1.5 percentage points earlier this year, but um, but this time we wanted to focus on on SMEs because of the reason which I said at the beginning that there is a good mood around SMEs and a good mood around innovation driven startups. So we want we wanted to be a part of the future success story by encouraging Finnish entrepreneurship and, and foreign entrepreneurship, uh, foreign entrepreneurs to to come to our country and participate to innovation driven economic growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister, for, for that address and then we will dig deeper into that a uh, little bit later in the in the final discussion. And the, in the very next then we have Mr. Bill Payne uh, presenting us on uh, the next five minutes about business angels in general and then on creative destruction. So, Mr. Payne, please. Thank you. Um, I'm delighted, delighted to be here in uh, Finland. I thank each and every one of you for the delightful weather for the last, uh, for the last uh, week or so. We've been here for one week now. Um, I have a, a favor to ask of the Prime Minister. Um, in, the, in the U.S. there is a secret pack among all angel investors that we don't wear ties except for weddings and funerals. So please, if you see my friends, tell them oh, you met me at a wedding. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, several things, and I'll move quickly through them. Um, a, a major study was done in the U.S. by the Kauffman Foundation, which is the largest um, philanthropy in the U.S., in fact, in the world, with a focus on entrepreneurship. And for the Obama administration in late 09, they published the following study. Uh, the gray areas on this chart are recessions. 
The red bars on this chart are job creation by companies that are more than five years old. The blue bars on this chart are job creation in the U.S. by companies that are less than five years old. Gee, there's a little difference, isn't there? Look at that, steady three million jobs a year created by companies less than five years old. Now, we don't have data from the current recession, but as you probably know, it takes several years to assemble this data. One of the authors, a very famous uh, researcher from the US, uh, compiled the data that companies less than five years old created 40 million jobs in the U.S. in the last 30 years. Companies more than five years old created zero. Is that a startling figure? I believe so. So, um, angel investors in the U.S. fund 20,000 startup companies every year. So, can I prove to you that angels, company, angel funded companies are creating lots and lots of new jobs? No, I cannot, because we don't have the data. But I can tell you that these companies that are less than five years old are in the sweet spot of where angel investors in the US invest. This is creative and destruction, growth, by the commercialization of new technology. Now, very quickly, I think you um, had uh, some preliminary information. Um, angel investors are wealthy individuals, many of whom are been there, done that, entrepreneurs. They're investing time and money in startup companies. The time is valued by entrepreneurs equally as much as the money. They're part-time investors. We like to play golf, play with our grandchildren. Well, some of us like to go ice fishing, maybe not quite so many as here, uh, but uh, regular fishing, uh, and we like investing in startup companies. So we're not full-time uh, investors. We also acknowledge this is very high risk investing. So one of the ways to compensate for risk is diversification. We have to invest small amounts of money in lots of companies, not lots of money in a small number of companies. Um, and this is a healthy, health, healthful or healthy competition. Large companies introduce new products, small companies introduce new products, um, and grow by being acquired by larger companies, uh, uh, and, and they grow by organically becoming larger companies. So I think it's sort of inappropriate for governments to encourage startup companies or large companies as a favoritism of one over another. Let's find a way to encourage the growth of both small and large companies. What can governments do to help? First of all, they can be supportive to startup companies and their investors, um, and I think most uh, most governments throughout the world do already support uh, large companies. But let's find ways to support startup companies because they're the ones that are creating jobs. Uh, governments and angel investors, I think we need to find a way, as you're already working on, uh, to find ways to motivate angels through the tax system. Um, and. Regarding uh, matching angel investments by the government, I think that we have to avoid spoon-feeding angels. In other words, making it too easy to be an angel investor. Let's make these guys work to make these investments. So, it is my opinion that governments generally are not very good investors in starting in co startup companies or in, in commercializing technology. Let's force the private sector to pick the winners and losers. And then uh, when government funding is available, let's match some of that early stage investment with uh, government money. Um, I thank you very much for your attention. Um, and uh, let's 
does talk about how we can help Finland become a more entrepreneurial economy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, excellent, excellent presentation. I think uh, since we started so so fast, I'll, I'll pick uh, or, or skip rather my, my warm up questions about how do we manage to accelerate growth. We we already touched that a little bit, and then go directly into into very very interesting uh, discussion about the creative destruction. So if we start with the, with you, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, if that holds that the, that the, the jobs uh, are created by, by companies that are less than five years old, uh, and Piban will conduct a study on that, uh, um, how do you see it in the, in the Finnish uh, current system? Uh, uh, are you as a politician ready to support the creative destruction as, as, a, uh, as an ideology uh, and, and uh, allow the, the less productive companies to give away to, to uh, give room to the new ones to grow. In the real world, we are not asked whether we accept the destruction, it just happens. And we can see, see it happening all the time. But the question for the politicians is, do we allow or do are we brave enough to accept the creative entrepreneurship growth in Finland? Um, as I said earlier, um, there are lots of things which could make Finland as a country in which the startup economy could grow and in which um, um, high value added business could emerge. But it just, just um, means that we have to accept success. We are a wealthy society, meaning that we are highly dependent on. Uh, productivity, we are highly dependent on global competitiveness because otherwise we cannot have enough money for services and, and income transport. So we are so dependent on global competitiveness and therefore we have to accept uh, that there are success stories. And now, as I said, for some reasons there are much more positive surrounding for good new success stories and, and we, we as a government we want to encourage start up, startups to, to grow and we, we want to encourage private investors to participate in the new stories. So something has have has happened. I don't know, maybe maybe people here know better than me why the general mood has changed, but one of the things which I think has had a positive impact is the university reform which we did and especially Aalto University and Rensu Karas in the Aalto University. It has shown new type of creativity and, and activity within the young people and everybody likes the new success stories. So, so when you ask whether we accept um, creative dis destruction, the, the atmosphere is really positive on this at the moment and when we know that we are losing all the time something, we have to we have to create something new instead. Yes. If we continue directly from that, uh, Tero you have you have seen six hundred cases in the last uh, half a year, was it so? Uh, so if you comment on that what has happened in the in the uh, atmosphere and, and uh, what is, what is your view on the on the creative destruction? Thank you. Yeah, it will be press the button. So, yeah, I think that a lot has happened, and, and one one of the, I would kind of maybe pick up two things that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, feel are are really in the heart of this one is one one is the attitude, and especially the young people. Uh, combined with the uh, people who have returned from sort of around the world to Finland to actually who are very often seasoned entrepreneurs and combining these two is creating a new environment. The second one is that it's kind of old news but I feel that the internet is actually finally making an, a big impact and, and, and you might be wondering what do you mean by that. I, I think the digital economy is uh, is uh, 
changing the industries as we speak, and especially I think the growth is not only coming from the new new sort of the digital products like gaming has been discussed a lot in Finland as how it is creating a, a, at least the initials of the new industries. But I feel that the internet services applied to the sort of the very uh, traditional industries can be uh, can create a lot of growth. And uh, I think the two examples on that one is kind of maybe not the creative destruction but uh, accelerating growth and. And one is related to the, how do you match actually demand and supply? And the internet is making it very easy. And in California, there's a company, I think it's called Cherry, that is uh, applying uh, location uh, and smartphone technologies into, into car washing. So you leave your car on the street, uh, your phone will locate it, and you, with the application, you then actually wish that within the next two hours, I'll be back. And actually what happened is that they dispatch a, 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 a car wash service and will wash your car. Or rain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it applies as well. And so they don't need to pick this, but anybody they charge, charge, charge you. But anyway, then they charge you and you are happy customers. In Finland, of course, maybe the better example would be when we get the big snowstorm, you would dispatch a, somebody to, to clean your, your yard. So that is a good example of matching demand and supply in a, in a new way and using the time that people have in a more efficient way. The second one is uh, I wanted to raise is a, is a construction industry or building house because I recently built, built one and, and it's, it's quite actually a amazing how old fashioned industry the, the, the construction industry is. But in Finland, uh, we have developed a great technology that uh, allows you to build virtual worlds. In this case, I personally built a virtual world out of my house. So I was able to invite people into my house to party before I actually had the house or, or visit the dinner. And uh, now this same technology is actually being developed in, by some company into a product where you can actually build your house, model it, uh, select the materials, and then uh, later on uh, uh, order them. And in this way, we are again seeing that, hey, an old industry where you typically draw the drawings of the house, you don't really understand what's coming out of it, is being renewed. And uh, in this way, uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, sort of examples where the construct, the, the creative destruction is happening by applying new technology in the old industries, and I believe that's the one recipe where Finland can be actually a leader. Yes. Leader. That's not really creative destruction, it's creative building. So it's the opposite of, okay, but okay. Let's I want not go. it to be positive. Yes, yes, I know. So uh, maybe uh, there's a chance for me to, to transfer this to, to uh, Mikke Pakvalen, because you are one of those entrepreneurs that are very seasoned and, and have been up abroad, and uh, now you are back in Finland and, and actually pushing, pushing hard. Uh, on, on your new venture. So, from your perspective, and then, even though I like Tero's comments, but let's try to be a little bit shorter, so, so, mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> just, you know, seeing, living abroad for the last 25 years, I think, Finland is, in my view, and let's be honest, I think it's, most of the people's view here, Finland is absolutely the best place for entrepreneurship in the world. Uh, the government has done a great job. Uh, we have uh, stability in this country. We have uh, access to really good people. The only thing we are lacking, really, in Finland, if we think forward, we shouldn't always criticize, but I think the only thing we are lacking is a good branding. We should be much, much better at branding Finland. Because that will, eventually, that will <coughs> attract the brightest minds, that will attract seasoned entrepreneurs, and all the other things that we already have in place, will then fuel growth as we see it going forward. Yes, that's, uh, that has been a problem earlier and seems to, seems to continue that way. Uh, if we move a little bit uh, forward uh, in, in our uh, topic, if we, if we are talking about public and private funding. So, so obviously now there is a public and private funding. Uh, during, during your tenure, which was almost eight years as a Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Vanhanen, uh, Many of the, the issues that, that are now now in place were, were uh, set up. Uh, could you could you comment on the on, on your views on the public and private funding? First, I'm very glad about what 
what has happened and uh, the decisions which the government made last month, month ago. During my term, we quite a lot concentrated to the R&D itself, the funding of R&D itself, and, and uh, tried to get it to, to the level of 4% 4, 4 of the GDP, and then we, all, we almost succeed on, on, on that. Now it is good that we put more focus to the equity base of the, uh, the com com companies. But I, I would like also to say something about this um, creative dist destruction. I accept that ideology quite, mm, uh, quite a lot if we can see that also in the inside all the co all the companies there is all the time happening this creative destruction. And, uh, and uh, one reason for the five years uh, level is that for example, in, in Finland, uh, after five years, only half of the company is solid. And after 20 years, one of the 10 is still going on. So, of course, after five years, there is a very big lack of uh, jo jobs, and uh, most of the new jobs are coming to the new, new ones. Very good, very good. Uh, Mr. Payne, on, on, on the, on the, from the US perspective, how, and you have uh, today met with the, the Ministry people at the at the university uh, uh, from uh, the Ministry of uh, 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 what's the name of it Tem uh, and 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 uh, how how do you see it uh, what's what's your perspective on it well, um, I'm sorry well uh, I, I actually don't like the expression creative destruction because it implies winners and losers and as you just implied. Uh, innovation can be internal to big companies as well as through startups. But it, it is a popular term today, and I think we understand that, uh, that industries and business models are being destroyed by uh, innovations in the, the, uh, within the internet uh, and, and elsewhere. Um, the, the, the issue verse of, of public versus private funding, um, I guess there's one comment that I think was clear from my earlier talk, and that is that I think both of them are, are important, but that uh, the private sector needs to be leading in picking winners. Because I think that's a very important concept. Yes, please. I, I would like to add one issue, and it is that what we don't see in the older and bigger companies is the always ongoing process of uh, productivity and efficiency. It's very important to our economy, but you don't see the results as concrete as, as you see when the new, new one is. Yes, mm -hmm. yes that, that's correct. And then, uh, of course, it has to be addressed that, that uh, uh, Startup companies won't solve all of our economical problems, obviously they don't. Uh, uh, but at the same time, if one of our problems is the job growth, uh, that won't happen in big companies, especially for that same reason, that they are very efficient and then they keep their systems uh, very efficient that way. Um, if we move a little bit to the uh, funding funnel or, or the, the, the possibility of, of a, a company to, to access financing, uh, the uh, traditional way is that first you get money from yourself, and from your friends, from your family, or fools, uh, somebody who likes to uh, move in very early. Then it's the angels, then, then you have micro funds, then you have uh, VC funds, and then uh, finally it's a public company. And hopefully the state will buy it. Okay, let's not go there. Uh, uh, that used to be the. So, um, so if we look at that, now Mikke, you are an entrepreneur and, and, and you, um, I have understood that you are in the in um, process of, of uh, finding financing. There is something wrong on that. You know, the, the companies don't go that way. We don't have any EPOs, we don't have any VCs, except we have uh, one here present, but not, almost none. Uh, with microfunds, we have only a couple, angels, you know, this, this is very new and then we are not too many yet. So, what's wrong from your perspective? Yeah, for the first time I'd like to say that we've uh, already closed a major private placement which will be announced soon, so... 
Uh, I think there are two main problems, I would say. I think, first of all, I, I think we have an excellent early stage funding solution or system in Finland. So, Tekes, Kex and Satya, I see some of the people being here, you're doing an excellent job. I think the big problem, <laughs> the big problem is, there are twofold big problems here. One is that the banks are completely risk averse. So it's, it's, uh, I haven't seen that anywhere else in the world and it's, uh, you know, you have to have a triple leverage on all of your, or securities on all of your, you know, any, any cash you want from the bank. So that's one big problem. And the second problem, I think, as you pointed out here, is that there's no growth funding in this country. So supporting companies that come into a growth phase is completely lacking. And that's something I think we, you know, we, we need to address. Yes. Tero, it's your job. <laughs> part of my job, but uh, I, I, uh, first I agree with, uh, with Mikke that uh, TECES and, and other funding is, is in the early stages actually well, well in place, I, I would say. There is improvement needed and especially I think uh, angel investing needs to be promoted, but that's working better than I, I maybe thought of a, a year ago and it's a result of the long, long development. Then in the, I feel that the biggest gap is actually in between the, the kind of the the big crowdfunding, because there you typically actually, okay, we don't have that big uh, VCs in Finland, we have a couple, but you can also easily get financing from outside. And, but in between the kind of after the angel funding and seed funding round, going to the next growth phase, there we are lacking uh, uh, funds and, and that should be addressed. And, and maybe a comment on the role of the public uh, uh, financing uh, funding I think there is a, like, uh, I like the concept that the, 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 the Phil was saying about the, the, the private sector needs to pick the winners, and, but I think the public sector could be a catalyst. So actually providing funds that, here is a, whatever, one million, ten million, you can find five times the money somewhere else. So being really kind of proactive in catalyzing, leveraging the public money in a, in a better way. So now we have a good use of public funds. Mr. Katainen, please. First, I'd like to comment on a little bit what the chairman said uh, about this, uh, this uh, thinking how to support the, the entrepreneurship. In some meeting of the uh, European Council, we were talking about the difference between the EU or the European uh, politicians' thinking and American politicians' thinking. And, and somebody said that when the European politi politicians see, see a new business running, I have to tax. <laughs> if it, if it still is going on, politicians start thinking I have to regulate. Once it's dead, it start thinking I must buy it. <laughs> but, um, but, um, about financing or funding uh, startups or or the other enterprises. I very much agree what the, what the previous speakers have said that uh, our public funds seem to function quite well, like Tekes or Teollis or Silis or or the other other funds. And uh, according my understanding, when I have been talking with uh, crowd entrepreneurs, they have said that the private equity, equity market doesn't function in Finland that well that it would be possible. Company is in that, that this size, and when it wants to grow aggressively or buy some other companies or do things like that, and it is almost impossible in Finland because our financing is based on bank financing. So, so yeah, and banks usually in Finland don't do this kind of risk investment at all. So, uh, we as a Northern Europeans or or uh, Nordic Nordic politicians, we usually start thinking what the government should do more. But uh, I have started to think, if we have good companies, which have a salary in their pocket, why a private money wouldn't, wouldn't come here? Is it only because we are so far away? Or is it, or is it because it's a Finnish innovation? I don't think so. So we should first think what to do in order to get more, better private equity market to this, to this country and try to encourage even foreign direct investment to the startups or fast-growing companies instead
capable of thinking how we could use more taxpayers' money. So I don't have a solution to, the, to this, and, and this is something which I would like to, to ask from the audience. What should be done in order to get a better price in the market or, or encourage, uh, encourage investment from, from abroad? Yes, that's a good way to turn a, a question around and, and, and then let the audience decide. Uh, but the, I think we have to do the, some, some of the time constraints. We will uh, we'll move on on the very same subject on a little bit different uh, angle on it. Uh, so, to barriers of growth. So, uh, while uh, agreeing with, with the Mr. Prime Minister on, on the, on the uh, idea that we definitely don't, uh, can't build businesses uh, on, on, on public funds, uh, there, there might be some, some other things that, uh, that are varying our, our growth. Uh, and one of the most important things, which probably has changed a little bit, is the attitude. Uh, and and uh, that doesn't cost anything. Uh, but how could we hire, how could we make uh, our tolerance of risk to be on a different level than it is now? And how could we foster the entrepreneurial spirit? Maybe this is something for <coughs> Mr. Payne to start. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the, uh, using uh, PR to talk about the successes of entrepreneurial ventures uh, publicizing the successes of your uh, accelerators in commercializing technology in new startup companies and the funding that they have received, and uh, a stronger role by role models of, uh, of successful entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs are two ways or three ways to uh, expand the public's, uh, let's say, acceptance of the fact that startup ventures are a very important part of the developing an uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, so uh, I believe that you've got a story to tell here in Finland. You probably need to do a better job of telling it. Yeah, sounds very promising. Uh, on uh, maybe something on, on, on that by somebody else? Anybody? Else? On the attitudes. Good. Uh, let's move to the some of the. Even though that Mika said that uh, it so, seems very good to to uh, uh, to be here, and I agree. Uh, uh, I'm free willingly here in Finland. Uh, I still have my passport. Uh, but I, I just last night I checked the, the Finnish uh, Employment Act or, or the, the regulations that that uh, regulate companies uh, and also startups on, on, on employing people. And uh, I checked that there was 29 laws uh, and on the, uh, on the explanatory books there were 1,448 pages of mandatory law. Uh, are we giving a right message to our startups on employing people by regulating it this much? So I'm taking a joke back to you, Mr. Katainen sure about this, but the fact is that, of course, we are, uh, or some, some of our regulations are better than in our competitive countries, and some are worse than in our competitive countries. For instance, hiring and firing in Finland is uh, easier than in Germany, for instance. And uh, when there's an economic recession, and the order books are not that good, uh, then uh, yeah, well, well, it's, uh, it's uh, easy. It's, it's, yeah, it's uh, quite pretty easy to lay off personal temporary pages. In, in some other countries, they don't have this kind of layoff uh, at all, and it, the only option is to, to kick off the stuff. So, of course, there are lots of uh, applications for, especially for small and medium-sized companies uh, in which they don't have that many people to work with. And entrepreneur himself or herself must do all the job, and it must be really heavy burden. But um, majorly, all the reg all the regulation which we have, they have some reason behind it. Of course, we can always think whether everything is uh, necessary or not for uh, 
doesn't make any sense to have a similar regulation for small and and for larger companies. I'm open for good ideas if there are some some ideas what change. The, basically, basically it's not that white and white and black situation that that all the regulations are too heavy compared to the, the other countries. No, I don't I don't uh, think that they are, but but uh, I'm hoping us to be the number one as, 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 as that, and uh, we don't have to be the number six or seven and, and be happy on, on that either. But, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, maybe it's just a comment that most of those uh, things that, that work very well, they work very well for the bigger companies, and, and which is good. I, I like it, you know, it, there's nothing wrong for, for our laws to work very well uh, for bigger companies. But if Mika, if you comment on this, and then, and then if, if Bill, you continue, and then, then Matti. Yeah, I have a lot of experience of that, and uh, build companies in Sweden, it's impossible in Sweden, so I hope we're not going that way. Uh, I like to look at it from a different perspective here. I think that we have some of the most loyal employees in the world in Finland, the most well-educated, we have good access to you know, top knowledge, competence, and we can also bring them from Russia, which is very close. People don't recognize the two and a half hour drive. We get the best IT people from there as well. So I think <coughs> The current legislation gives a lot of flexibility, as the Prime Minister said, and I'm, I'm, I don't really see any problems here. You still don't see any problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not seeing it. I think it's something wrong with it. Okay, <laughs> Bill, please. Uh, so let me make a comment on something that may be relatively controversial. Um, there have been many uh, 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 problems in the big corporate sector with stock options. So many jurisdictions, not just the US and Finland, but many others have regulated uh, this area of uh, stock options to the point that it's, it's, they've lost a lot of their value to startup ventures. And, and think about startup companies. They don't have any cash. They want to employ the best people in the world, both as employees, as, as directors, as mentors, and they can compensate them and uh, encourage them to participate through stock options. So my suggestion is that, uh, that Finland and the US and many other jurisdictions consider the possibility of different rules for stock options for small startup companies that are below, well pick a number, uh, 20 million euros per year in revenues or, or 30 or five or whatever makes you comfortable. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be much more free in the allowance of using uh, options to compensate employees and directors uh, than uh, the mistreatment of options that we've seen by big public companies. So have two or three sets of rules, one for public companies, one for big, big private companies, and one for small startups. But give us back that uh, wonderful um, methodology that we had for using non-cash compensation uh, for startup ventures. Excellent. Uh, now I, I think we have two comments, but let's start with that. Vanhanen and then Mikke, you can comment. We, we still have a problems with uh, work permits. And I, I, I hope that we could develop the system such that it is the employer who knows who he or she want to hire. And not, not the administration who knows that uh, do you really need him or her. That's the first point. The second, the second point is that now when you have succeeded quite well to get your voice to be heard in the issue of business agents, uh, taxation system. Now raise also the question about the labor flexibility. Especially if you can get from startups examples of workers who can say that we are ready to more flexible rules. I believe that we will need this type of debate also because it is the labor unions <coughs> who are deciding about these rules, but they are playing with the companies which will not create new jobs, but they are binding also your companies. That's that's very much so, and, and I would I would see see that in a startup community, 
really the workers in the early states they are in the same you know literally you're in the same boat and 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 there is no you know we, we are we need as an entrepreneur you need the people and the people need you so so that there is not a uh, you can't really see it as an old-fashioned uh, employee uh, employer uh, situation but now we get please. I, I just you know this is the one of the few items I really disagree with the, with the politicians I think uh, <coughs> Stock options. Finally, finally. <laughs> now, but stock options have been made uh, in Finland completely valueless. Or how do you say? They are taxed to death. Uh, the schemes that you can apply are impossible. And so, so you know, incentivizing people with stock options in Finland is, is really a pain. And it requires a lot of legal people. It's a high cost. Why can't you make it easier? <laughs> <laughs> It's me that asks the questions here. So. <laughs> yeah, but again, I resented you calling it a pain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, there, uh, I'm sure that we will come up with uh, with with some some suggestions and, and ideas on, on on the both on the stock options and, and on the on the work uh, regulation that that we have. And then this is you know. Like in the growth sector, which is very, very good, you know, it's nice to work on that sector because things are, uh, uh, we are working on the common goal, you know, you're, you're working on, on, uh, on the same, same, uh, same side. So, so I don't think that there is, you know, for, for the government's point of view, if we have uh, more growth and then because of the stock options and then they are maybe regulated a little bit different than they are now, that's, that, that should be fine and then for the workers' point of view as well. Instead of having 1,400 pages, maybe if we have 50 pages for the startups, it would be fine. Uh, okay, uh, let's move to uh, from the barriers of growth, uh, which we saw, uh, to, to a little bit more to the incentives. Um, it has been well published uh, that uh, there is a, a tax incentive for, for, for growth investment, private growth investment uh, in, in, in Finland. Um, uh, from your point of view, from being abroad and then thought in a hundred business angel uh, conventions, how do you see, Mr. Payne? Is it uh, what's the relevance of you know? Do we really need them, or, or is it more of a advertising? Or, or how, how do you see? You know. I think that's a really good question. Um, the uh, I, I have never made a single angel investment out of my 52 investments because there was a tax incentive. On the other hand, I think tax incentives are a great uh, uh, way to publicize the opportunities for wealthy individuals become, to become uh, uh, angel investors. Uh, angel investors is a big secret. Uh, who knows about it? So one of the ways that we can encourage uh, angel investment is by having some kind of angel tax credit. Um, and so we see a lot of action in the US, a lot of activity around uh, a, a tax incentives. In, in the state of Wisconsin, I am actually familiar with the data. And there's been an explosive growth in companies funded by uh, angel investors since they installed a tax in incentive. Um, so uh, it's difficult to describe the chicken and the egg, but there is a positive outcome from tax incentives. Um, and, and much of it has to do with simply increasing the awareness of the opportunity for wealthy people to get involved in startup companies, to help their local economy, to get a re good return on investment, and uh, to practice their business skills by investing in early stage companies. And they may not be at all aware of this opportunity until there's some uh, greater public awareness and a tax incentive is one really good way to do that. Yes. Uh, okay, Tero, you had a comment on that. Yes, I think first noting that uh, I think the government has uh, here in Finland taking the steps to the right direction and, and made some good decisions. So I think that's a good good start. 
But I wanted to actually broaden the, the, the tax incentive beyond the angel investment into your taxation in general, because I think in the digital economy, we are seeing interesting developments like, for example, why, why is Apple running their whole music business uh, from Luxembourg to there? Because it's actually uh, tax efficient to do that. And uh, when we are seeing in our, in our growth areas, like uh, in this case digital music, I think the same will apply to the, to the books industry, etc. cetera. We, we should look at that, is Finland an attractive place to run businesses that are uh, intellectual property based? And I would call for a, a review and, and, a, and a total look into this area as to what can we do to attract more investment into Finland? And we actually, uh, the prime minister raised this point that how to make Finland more attractive for direct investments and taxation is a big, big issue in decision making. Yes, very good. I think we can uh, easily move uh, to the next question while uh, Prime Minister Katanen is, is, uh, can answer to the same same question that uh, that they're, they're uh, raised. And, and and my question is that what are the drivers? What what are the things that that, that the government was thinking when, when you were thinking of, of 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 giving this tax break? After all, you're giving the money to the you know wealthy and the well dressed and uh, well spoken and uh, quite humble. Uh, business aim uh, that really do not need the money. So, so um, what were the drivers? First, first comment to the IP, intellectual property tax issue. It's an interesting thing because at the moment there is no tax base at all, basically. I mean, it's, it's not an political issue, it's not an soil on this issue and uh, we could try to find if we could do something in order to make our country more competitive on, on for for investments to in the intellectual property. Very good idea. The drivers um, behind for instance the tax incentive which we have already agreed um, main driver was to strengthen the good mood which we already have in this country within the startups and, and um, yeah, basically within the startup uh, enterprises. As I said earlier that there are more startups than before for some reasons and, and now we want to encourage them to grow. And also it's a long time when we when we last time have seen a small company to become a big company in Finland. The, I don't know why it is like this, but uh, but uh, it just it's not a typical and and because there is a good positive move going on, we want to strengthen this move. Um, it, it's very good to hear what you have said about the importance of tax incentives. It's not that clear that the uh, tax incentives always create something new. Um, but uh, when looking at the history or background of our country, in which the entrepreneurship has not been in that level where it should have been concerning the innovation uh, surrounding. So there the change might make the incentives even more powerful than the value of money uh, which we are spending uh, in April. And there, for instance, are indeed deductions. Like Matti, one and remembers, I have I haven't been always in favor of it. Uh, when I was in the Minister of Finance, I, I wasn't that interested in about it. <laughs> 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 and, and, and uh, even, even now I know that there will be quite a lot of debt burden. So it's, uh, we cannot concentrate the tax, the tax R&D deduction only to the new innovation investments or to the investments which wouldn't appear without the tax incentives. So there is always uh, some debt burden, but, but the change itself in a policy, I hope it would encourage the general atmosphere. And that's why, as I said in my first, uh, words 
here, um, we had, we were talking whether to lower the company income tax by 1.5 percentage points or to use the same amount of money for the smaller, more targeted incentives and we, we chose the latter one. Because we, we believe that the, the change to the old atmosphere or old thinking has bigger in positive impact than 300 million euros which we are spending for those incentives. So this is the driver or rational of our of our decision. Yes, and if I may continue, I, from an outsider's point of view, it, it looks that the uh, government is taking a risk uh, on, on it and, and, and by showing that risk taking, it's also uh, showing others, uh, uh, entrepreneurs and, and, and the finance that, that there is a, it's a good thing to, to take a risk. Um, now, since we have been so uh, fast, I think we'll, I have several questions ready, but, but we have a good chance now for, for some questions, if we have uh, questions from the audience, and we do. I think it works so that you just press the button and, and then uh, the microphone will be on. Please. Prime Minister uh, Banoist, uh, I'm Daria Pakkunen and representing Portman and also Piban. I work on as board member in eight different companies, all are Finnish, some of them are born global from day one. In March, uh, there was Finland's first startup uh, delegation uh, visit to USA, to New York, and also Silicon Valley. I had a great pleasure to be chairman of also that delegation, and I would like to use this opportunity to thank you, uh, Foreign Minister, and also Minister of Foreign Affairs. Great job. Let's multiply that like this. Uh, question. Uh, somebody mentioned about the branding, and uh, I believe personally that we have a great target in building uh, Finland as a startup hub of pure potential laid on, let's see, the global game. And that requires also functioning uh, market from funding and, and exit pers perspective. So if we look at the facts, in OMX Helsinki, there is 120 companies, basically zero or none uh, listing, uh, listings during past years. First North, which is a pre-list uh, in Sweden, 108 companies has been listed in that list, and couple only from Finland. I assume we have an issue or a big opportunity to improve. So what you would recommend in order to lower the car for these startups, uh, growth companies coming from Finland in order to be listed also here in Overmax Housing? Okay. So who would like to? Well, actually this is an issue which I'd like to get answered from you. Because this is exactly what I have been thinking. Because in Sweden they don't have any, any sort of tax incentive to go to first north. As they had in, as they have in, for instance, um, London Stock Exchange, there's a pre-list called what, what's what a, a, a list, and they have some tax incentives. But I, I guess in Sweden they don't have, and and that in that sense we are in a similar situation. But uh, what, what is the reason that our companies don't go to the pre-list? I can I can answer to that because it's an easy one. So uh, <laughs> it's about the currency. Can you do that? No, hundred. Uh, uh, 100 million uh, kroons sounds much more than 10 million euros. And if you have a 100 million kroons company, which is valuation is 100 million, then I said I have a 100 million company, and you, can, you can list it. But it seems like that because there are several companies that are 100, 200, 300 million kroons, which is, you know, basically everybody in Finland says that's nothing. But now, Mitke, you are announcing your stock listing on the, on the kiosk. No. No, I just would like to... That negative, <laughs> that negative attitude that is... <laughs> no, I, I just, I just like to add that it's, it's a lot about attitude. It's a lot about the community, it's a lot about the attitude. And I think, you know, we've seen recently, in recent days, you know, a company, great company, now don't quote me wrong here, but a company which has a sound management, growing very rapidly, um, you all know it, Frugo, has been more or less killed by the media, incompetent media in Finland, sorry for saying that. But it's been, uh, you know, and this is the way it works in Finland. And it's all about the attitude. It's all about that. And we need to work on the attitude. 
Swedes are great at building up the people that, you know, entrepreneurs, lifting them up, allowing them to be seen. So it's all about that. Yes, that's how it seems. Another question. We still have a time for one, one more, please. We... Oh, sorry. I, I was going to make a comment about public listings. Um, Let's be brief. In an entrepreneurial economy, I think they're overrated. Uh, the, the U.S. economy, uh, the entrepreneurial economy, I think is, is, is thriving to some degree. I think we're doing pretty well. Venture capital is painful, uh, but angel investing is substantial, and the number of M&A transactions is booming. Uh, so uh, the, the IPO market, or the initial public offering or first listing marketplace in most places in the world is just a fundraising strategy. It does not define an exit because it usually does not create enough liquidity for early uh, investors to exit. So uh, it's just another of the many options that are available for funding enterprises and we can have a thriving economy. In fact, we've demonstrated that because our NASDAQ market is dead except for a few guys like Facebook and Google uh, but uh, those are, in, in the total numbers of companies, tiny hundredths of a percent of all the successful companies are actually uh, doing a, an initial offering. Okay, we, I think we still have a time for one, one more question, or we have several, but uh, let's have, I think you were the first one too. Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Steve Marina, I'm the editor of the DigiPist.fi and a startup entrepreneur. Um, it's uh, pretty difficult for the government to jump into conclusions of taking credit for the success of, let's say, startups or some of these ecosystem activities. To me, it seems uh, online publications like Arctic Startup, when these guys were working on the publication aside, because driven by the enthusiasm of it, and then turning that into full-time job. And the student uh, organizations being driven by the enthusiasm of looking at startups in other countries and, and uh, what's going on elsewhere and trying to replicate these models here in the Finland. Um, I think innovation and the, the real growth happens through these kind of serendipic activities by supporting the structures and the conditions for people to meet, and it's really hard to predefine. Uh, the government can take um, credit for supporting and encouraging and cultivating because you don't create communities from the top down, but you can encourage them uh, to emerge out of your help. So um, I would like to hear some comments on that. Thank okay. you. Comments on that comment? I fully agree. And that's why I said that, that maybe one of the reasons why there are more positive sentiment around startup activity in Finland is that we, we did university reforms. Because it, for me, it's uh, for instance, when we had venture for us in all the university, there wouldn't be a venture for us without the university reform. But, uh, but now there is. And actually, we didn't mean when we did this university reform with Matti Vanhanen, we didn't even mean that there would be a venture for us. It just happened to create. To, to build up when active people, mostly young people and, and very uh, open-minded uh, head of, of the leadership of the university allowed it to happen. So, so, so this is the thing. People have done this uh, great momentum to, to our country and that's why we want to encourage the positive atmosphere. We want to be a part of the future success story and kind of make the surrounding more encouraging My government or the previous government uh, has not created any any startups, but uh, we just want to. I, I'm so happy that this mindset has changed so fast. Uh, I'm just looking looking at the opportunity to support the natural um, activism of this field. Okay, uh, and as I think we, our time is about to uh, run out. Uh, Maybe if I try to summarize this in 30 seconds, which is easily done. Uh, uh, 
Investing is about future, it's about uh, confidence, like, like uh, Mr. Prime Minister said. We have some issues, I think we, I, uh, I listed four of them. Uh, we have the lack of uh, branding, or, or the, the willingness to brand maybe also. Stock options uh, should be taxed maybe differently. We have something on the, in, on the incentives, but let not, let's not uh, start uh, to spoof, feed uh, those rich, uh, 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 I don't say the word, and then we have something on the work permits. I think we could we could uh, we could look at that. And as a final word, I, I think uh, we should just accept the success if it happens. Okay, thank you very much, everybody.